Granny squares? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Jamie with Therapy and Knots, and today I thought I would take you along with my journey. It is a super rainy, cold day here in Louisville, Kentucky, and this makes for the perfect day for crocheting. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to take you guys through how I find a pattern, where I go to get my yarn, what happens when the yarn that's on the pattern isn't in the store, and can you modify. And then we're also going to kind of get us started with this project, and then I'll finish it up over in the blog post, and I'll put that information down in the description. So first things first, where do you go to get patterns? For me, I have two spots that I'm going to go to get patterns. One is Pinterest, and the other one is Riverly, and I am probably not saying that right, so I will put what that is right down here. So in Riverly, you have the ability to go create a free account. It is an amazing place. It is the one place that goes for crafters to be able to give their patterns. And it's not just crochet. So you could have knitting and crocheting and crossfitting and clothes. There's all kinds of things. But it's very nice that you can use their search functions and drill down for exactly what you want. My main thing, I go in there and I am purposely looking for free or very, very cheap patterns. And I have that option to look so that I can like funnel through and I don't have to you know what I'm saying. You can get there quick with what you're picking. So today I was like, you know what? We want to do a granny square pattern. And with this first one, I wanted to pick one that we could do all together that was not super complicated or multiple parts or have to make 47 different granny squares. So I went purposely and looked for a blanket that was basically one giant granny square over and over and over again. So I did head over to Riverly. I put granny Smith, I select it free, scroll through, and found the one that we're going to do. I say we because you should totally do this with me. <laughs> All right, so the pattern that we have for, for our project is from Yarn Inspirations, and it, it has a nice PDF that's going to print out that you can then, I mean, it's super nice, right? Like, look, it's anyway. So on here, it's going to say to you that they prefer, or not that they prefer, but what they used was Karen Chunky Cakes. And I will tell you, sometimes it's hard to find these Karen Chunky Cakes. And so the question then comes is, how do I find an alternative for this yarn? So the really cool thing about this is all the yarn that they're using is basically just super bulky yarn. So I'm going to go into, and you all know my favorite place to get yarn is Myers. I'm going to head into Myers, and I'm going to find us some super chunky yarn alternatives that you could use for this pattern and then i'm going to show you what i get so let me run in here and i'll be right back check the mic and make sure it sound right boy okay guys so on the instructions it's going to tell you that you need five times 280 grams so when you go and you look at your yarn so at Myers, they don't have karen chunky yarn but what they do have is some other options so you are again looking for bulky yarn and if you look on the back right up there where it has the little oh this is hard to do right up where it has this little yarn here you're looking for one that says super bulky or six and then on the front it's going to tell you how many grams are in this particular one so this one right here is 150 grams the other thing about this particular yarn right here while it's really really beautiful it's 7.99 for just one of these so if i'm looking at getting almost 10 of these this is going to be a really expensive project so i'm going to go down just a little bit and see if i can find something a little bit on the cheaper side Okay, I found what I'm gonna use. So this right here is the Hometown, and you guys know that I already have like a secret love for Lion Brand, but this is Lion Brand Hometown. This right here, if you look on the back of the label, does have a six, so this is a super bulky. And then I'm going to go, this is probably backwards for you, I apologize. This is 142 grams. So total for this project, I need 1,400 grams. So I'm just gonna take that in my calculator, divide it by the 142, and so I'm gonna end up needing about five of these. I'm gonna go ahead and get six just because I'm, I don't wanna come back. <laughs> With this pattern, you can change colors, you can do, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alternate between this dark gray and black, And but there's like tons of colors. Hold on, I'll show you guys. But there's tons of colors that you can pick from. You can be really, really bright, but you all know that I'm like stuck on black and gray. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna grab this. This is gonna end up being about $30 in yarn. So just make sure that if you're making this project to sell, that you recover your cost plus your time. Okay. Okay, I lied. my math was wrong. I'm gonna need 10 of these, but it still ends up being $30 because they're $2.99 each. Okay, guys. 
We made it to our crochet room. I've got all of my yarn right down here in our bag. And I've got the printed out PDF, which I will put in the blog post so you can hold over and get a copy of it for yourself. And then when on here, if I look under materials, it's gonna tell me that I need a size L or eight millimeter crochet hook. So what I'm gonna do is go, oh, I've got a mess, I tell you. This is also a really good opportunity to kind of clean up your stuff while you're looking for your next hook. So what I'm gonna need, this is what I use. Again, it just keeps everything all in one spot. Um, you guys know that I tend to buy stuff on sale, so not everything matches, and that is completely okay. It also gives me the opportunity to find the ones that I like the best. And then just a pencil, school pencil holder. I think I got this for like a dollar at the store. Uh, you are gonna need some scissors, and you're going to need a what they call a tapestry needle. Uh, this is what they look like in plastic, or you may find them in metal, and they're going to look like that. So that's the tools that you're going to need for this particular one. Let me go find my number 8 millimeter one. I'll be right back. Okay, so I actually have two 8 millimeter. I have one that is like this solid plastic piece, and then I have one that is metal. You're going to have to figure out what you like the best. My preference is actually the metal ones. I just feel like the yarn slides a little bit better on these. So that is what we're going to get going. So let me grab my yarn and we'll get started. Okay, so I'll be real honest with you. Finding the inner thread in one of these little yarn skeins is like the vein of my existence. So. <laughs> I would tell you that uh, don't watch me do this because I tend to make a giant mess. Okay, so there it is. What I'm going to do first is add a slip knot on the tail end of this. So wind it around. There are videos on this channel that walk you through exactly how to do a slip, how to slip knot, let me finish that sentence, and how to place it onto your hook. So go check out those other videos. So in this, I'm gonna follow the directions that it tells me. And the very first thing it tells me to do is to chain 31. So again, there are videos on this channel, I'm probably going to say that 40 times, that walk you through exactly how to do that. So I'm going to go through this kind of quickly and I'll be right back once I get to 31. Now what I will say about granny squares, they come in all shapes and forms. And if we like this project and we want to really dive down into traditional granny smith square, granny, granny, what are they called? Oh my gosh. Granny, I don't know. But today we've got granny rectangular crochet like blanket. So we start out with our chain of 31 and then our next set of instructions, we're gonna do two DCs in the fourth chain from the hook. All right, so remember, the one that is on your hook does not count. You're gonna to go to the count from the next loop. So one, two is our second chain. I'm gonna give us two double crochets in that fourth chain. So we have our two double crochets. And now we're going to move on to the next step and it says chain one, skip two stitches and then do three double crochets all in that next or that third stitch. So let's chain one, count over two. So we go past the stitches that we have been working. This is hard. I need to turn the camera around. Let me do that. Okay guys, <clears throat> that's a little bit better. So let's start again with our two double crochets that we have. The next stitch tells us to chain one, skip two stitches, so one and two, and then we're gonna do three double crochets in that third stitch. All right, so here's one. Oh, you're gonna hear this puppy. Uh -huh. There's one and two. All right, if we read the instructions, it's gonna tell us that we need to do that exact same series eight more times, or seven more times. It's a total of eight. Yeah. That's okay, guys, so I just followed the pattern around. So I've created my little clusters of the three double crochets. And then when I got to this last stitch, it had you basically repeat the pattern all the way around so that we're gonna end up turning this and creating long rounds all the way around until it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now on this, you have the opportunity to change colors. You can keep it all one solid color. You can do a couple of rows, but basically this is your starting foundation and we're just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger as we go around. 
Okay guys, so this is our project for this month. If you get stuck in any manner, either send me a message or just leave a comment below. But this finished product and any tips and tricks that I find is gonna show up on the blog. So you need to head over to therapyandknots.com. I'm gonna finish this out. This project's probably gonna take me a couple of days and then everything will be posted up. And then again, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. And once we get done with this project, let me know if there's something else that you guys wanna try. Maybe we go for a more traditional granny square? I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos and go be awesome. Bye, guys.